Hey, John Rigolo, instructor of Spec Rescue International. Today on the Spec Show, I'm going to talk about working at height, fall arrest, and the requirements for fall arrest while working at height. So we're at our tower today. The tower is a lattice tower designed for fall arrest and lead climb training. The tower has a couple of different features to it that we utilize when we teach fall arrest. Two types of fall arrest, existing and then perhaps non-existing. On this particular tower we have an existing fall arrest system. It's a block system with a, with a track. The way this works is obviously there's a pre-existing block attached to a track that can be removed but a lot of times it stays on the track. The climber would then attach his harness to the uh, carabiner on the fall arrest and begin the climb up the ladder. Should the climber fall, become disoriented, not be able to continue climbing, and they fall back, this will arrest their fall. In the absence of that, then we have to use other means to arrest our fall. OSHA says, whenever we free climb above six feet or an open exposure, we need to have fall arrest or fall protection. So that's one of our, our goals. We prescribe at Spec Rescue International 100% lock off, meaning anytime you climb, you're locked off in a manner that if you were to fall, your fall will be arrested. Of course, anytime you're over six feet off the ground, that is a requirement. So think about being on a rope rescue, maybe at a tower. If you were to free climb the tower, you would be outside the rules and you wouldn't be doing things safely. There's equipment that's out there, pre-existing, or equipment that you would bring that will allow you to climb this tower safely and efficiently so you go home safely at the end of the uh, incident. So for today's training, I'm wearing my class three harness. I have my chest attachment, and waist attachment, and of course my dorsal attachment that we'll use later for other climbing. In this particular uh, scenario, there's a pre-existing uh, fall arrest system. It's a track mounted to the ladder with the fall arrest block, if you will. So as I climb up, the block will trail with me. As I climb down, the block will trail with me. And should I fall back, the block would arrest my fall. Of course, there's a shock absorber built into it as well. So should I generate any forces, that will absorb the shock, lessen the impact on me, and maybe uh, limit my injuries. Pretty easy system to operate, pretty much. You just go up, and of course, this one needs maybe a little bit of maintenance. I just go up, and it trails right with me as I go up. To come down, same thing, it just follows me down. As you can see, it's hung up a little bit, but it'll just follow me right down to the ground. At all times, I'm in fall arrest, so should I take a fall, nothing will happen to me. So if you were to arrive at an incident and there was no pre-existing fall arrest system, another option or an option that you have is to use bypass lanyards. Some people call them lobster claws, some people call them 100% lock off, there's a number of different terms for them, but basically it's a double lanyard that's attached to my dorsal attachment, so the back of my harness has an attachment, there is a shock absorbing device built into it, and I have two large hooks that will fit over the structural steel of the tower. What this allows me to do is to connect to the tower and to begin to lead climb up the tower. Of course, it's important to make sure the hooks lock. So I place the hook on the tower and I'll begin my climb. As I go up, I bring this harness over. Now, obviously, best case scenario, I would always be above my head. So in this case, I bring my second lanyard up, lock it, and now I can disconnect this lanyard. So 100% lock off the entire way up the tower. And we'll just repeat this until we get to our victim or whatever location we need to be at to work to effect a rescue. If I were to take a fall, and obviously there's some concerns about swing and things like that, but the bottom line is I'm not going to hit the ground. So that's it for today's show. For additional information on professional training like this, you can reach out to me at the information on the screen.